that make us us and not be ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts of praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures all generations. The word of the Lord is already blessed.
know y'all been talking about it. It's been on your news feed. Everybody, everybody of color has been talking about it. But you be very individuals here. Leave everybody else around on Friday nights to win service. You got something that the world does not have. You got hope. You got Jesus. You got faith. If anybody ever will pull you out your car and take your life, you know you got eternity waiting for you. But you don't act like it. Until it comes knocking at your door. But as black brothers and sisters, caramel, yellow, red, black, blue, I don't care what color you are. You can praise God for those who are lost. Those who are hurting. Those in bereavement. You done watched the videos, I know. You done made comments, you done been on Facebook Live, I know. You done posted it on Instagram, I know. You've been talking about it. And I know emotions are raw all over the United States. But as the people of God, we got somebody we can go to and talk to all about it. And though we might be hurt, though we might cry about it, though we might feel some kind of way, we can tell Jesus and he is going to work it out. My God. That ring. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
church. No, no. no. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure because I could have stood outside on the box or something. But and I'm sure people came, but I didn't make sure. And I know it's hot, but we're gonna be all right. But if I had to pick a topic tonight, it would be it's a result of your faith. Can you repeat that with me? It's a result. It's a result of your faith. Of your faith. Now, as I preach, I want y'all to listen to me. Don't just, don't just hear. I want you to listen. I want you to pick it up. I want you to get in your spirits. Amen? Because a lot of us will listen to the preacher, and then after we go home, we don't know what he didn't say. He could have been talking about your mama. You could have been saying, yeah, amen. What you just said, that's what y'all like to say a lot. And shout over that stuff, but really get work because... What's, what's, who can tell me our verse that we use in Sunday school all the time? Oh, Workmen who need not be ashamed, rightly God in the word of truth, St. Timothy 2.15. Amen. So what are you trying to say, preacher? When it comes to this, when it comes to the stuff that's going on out in the world, as the parishioners, it's your job to go home and study. It's your job to get into your Bible and see what God is saying. Uh -huh. So you be not ignorant to the things that are going on. Mm -hmm. And when stuff starts getting crazy, you got some spiritual also to yes. pull it out and use. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? So don't wait on me to come get you a spoon with something in it. Uh-oh. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Unless you're a baby in Christ, but to all most of you, most of the guys are pretty grown in here. So 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. What is Peter talking to us about here? <clears throat> Peter is praising God for a hope that is still alive. All right. mm -hmm. What are you saying, Pastor? Why is it alive? It's alive because Jesus died and he rose. And he gave us that same ability and power yes. after he got about the grave. Amen? Amen. Amen. So Peter here writes this epistle, and he starts off with verse 3. He says, Give praise to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth and a hope that is alive. It's alive because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He has given us this new birth so that when we might share in what belongs to him, it is a gift that can never be destroyed. It can never be swallowed nor faded away. It is kept in heaven for you. So what his sacrifice on two dirty pieces of wood with a bunch of nails, he gave you something that you can cherish and you can hold on to. Amen. Especially at times like this. Uh -huh. Again, when you have been watching the media, yeah. when you have been discussing about this in your homes, and even looking in your own backyard and seeing stuff happen on Bradley, on 4th Street, things of that sort, it gives you some kind of hope that you as a person of God because many people who are affected by it that don't have firm relationship with him don't have hope anywhere. All right. And I, I try to understand with most church people, not church people, not kingdom people, that church folks will come here all the time, like a Friday night, Sunday morning, come to Bible study, you feel the spirit moving, you might come to the altar every now and then, but yet you never really take hold of what God has given you. Mm -hmm. Every time a trial comes, the tears flowing, you're knocking on the pastor's door, you're calling him at night, you're telling everybody else to pray for you, and then out of your mouth comes excuses and say, I ain't there yet. Mm -hmm. You keep praying for me, I ain't saved all the way. When are you going to ever get there? You've been here for six years. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I'm walking heavy tonight. Mm -hmm. When are you going to ever say, I want to grow up? Oh, well. <laughs> when are you going to take that necessary step? You know, even though it bothers me that he is right, I'm going to listen. Uh -huh. Even though it irks my nerves that the sermon has been hitting my life and knocking at my door, I'm going to get myself together. Uh -huh. But no. Most of us are still adults with a grumpy attitude. Oh, well, well, well. You never have a childlike faith because you won't let nobody tell you how you need to live. Uh -huh. oh, well. uh -huh. You won't let the preacher 
explained in the scripture how you need to live a holy life separated from things of the world. Mm -hmm. Because you want to keep hold on to the things that you like. Well, come on. And the stuff that you love and what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. But my Bible tells me there are pleasures in his right hand forevermore. Yeah, right. And with the pleasures in his hand, they never fade away. Well. But what you got going on, what you got fixed on your mind, even sitting here tonight, uh -oh. even after you get out of here, what you got on your phone, I don't care what you're doing, you have made up in your mind that I'm going to do what I want to do. Amen. And, God. And when it happens, you want to be sorrowful. Uh -huh. I feel bad. I shouldn't have made that mistake. Why did I talk to him? Why did I let her come over? Why did I get in the car? Why did I make that phone call? Why did I send that text message? Why did I post that status? Our generation needs help. Uh -huh. I need help too, but we need hope that's still alive. Amen. And you as the church, judgment starts here first before it starts anywhere else. Yes. 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 And if we can't ever look right or get it right, how do you expect everybody else to get it right? If I were a newcomer coming in here and the seeing here this kind of stuff, I would not watch this church. How people talk about folks. How folks snick and laugh behind each other's backs. How they do all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't want to be part of this. Because I feel like there'll be more love out there. Because I know who I can trust and who I can't trust. But when I come in here, I don't know who I can trust. Because you smile. You look good. You smell good. You might even shake my hand. Oh man, you might even give me compliments, bro. Oh. Watch your back. But I can't. I don't know who I can trust. So my hope has to be in God. Because if I put my hope in you, it fails. But I don't know if the devil will turn his back on me. But there needs to be hope that's still alive. And I'm wondering, did you still have it? Uh huh. That same hope you got when you were saved, did you still have it? Yes. Can you even recall mm -hmm. when the Lord touched you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you recall when He pulled you out of the muck and mire clay? Yes. Can you recall when He tapped on your heart and said, "Come on, son and daughter, I'm calling you to a better place." Yes. Can you recall yes. Yes. when things started to change? Mm -hmm. Can you recall when you were praying and somebody got saved? Can you recall when your mind got right? Well. Or if it is right. Can you recall? These are the things Peter's talking about that we need to go back to and think on. Mm -hmm. Because we're having a lot of negativity thrown in our faces. And if you sit there and watch TV long enough, you get depressed. Well. Yes. You sit there and watch it long enough, you be scared to go outside. Some of y'all scared to go to sleep if you leave certain TV shows on. And I have never, never understood if we all read the same Bible, right? Okay. Maybe we got the same translation. But we all read the same Bible. And my Bible told me that he's not giving us a spirit of fear. But a love, joy, and a sound mind. If God is in control, I ain't worried about nobody to try to do something to me. Because I got a father that's going to take care of my needs. Uh -huh. Now y'all say it, but do you really believe it? Yes. My God. But there's a song they sang a long time ago called Victory in Jesus. I don't know if you've ever heard it. I didn't hear it until I went down to Missouri in a little small town called Seymour. Where you had to leave before it turned dark. If you are dark skinned. I mean, Pastor said we gotta go. Before the sun go down, we get in the car, we need to be on the highway. But the song says, Was it victory in Jesus, my Savior forever? He sought me and he brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. What are you saying, preacher? Jesus torn all of that. Him dying on the cross and shedding his blood has most definitely given us the access to have victory in these trying times. Amen. When challenges come your way, you need to know who you are a part of. Uh -huh. Amen. When things look difficult and contrite, you need to understand who your daddy is. Uh -huh. But 
maybe I don't understand most people don't understand who their father is because y'all don't pray. Maybe you just opened your Bible today for the first time. I don't know. But if we would ever decide to take a relationship with Christ uh -huh. and really, really mean real and stop perpetrating. Because if I put you outside with somebody who don't know the ways of the church, they'll point you out. If a person were to come in here demon possessed, they might point you out. Now, oh, would your stuff be spilled all over the place? How would you feel? You'd be embarrassed, wouldn't you? But it's a time when we need to get ourselves together mm -hmm. and really stop playing church. Mm -hmm. Because your hope is still alive. Mm -hmm. The hope that we have in Christ can never be taken away from us or destroyed. It never goes away and it'll never run out. So why is your head down? Why is your heart heavy? I said it before, we all read the same word of God. The same word that heals us. The same word that gives us life. The same word that gives us strength. But then I have to ask the question again. Do we really believe what we hear and what we read? Yes. Or do we just take it because it's a routine? Do I just sit here so I can get my, 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 uh, my star in for the week that I came to church? I heard what the preacher said. I went to Bible study. I, I'm, good. I'm a good boy scout. I'm a good girl scout. I'm going to get my patch. I got it. But your patch ain't going to mean nothing if it ain't real. Mm -hmm. yeah. Verse 5. It says, through faith you are kept safe by God's power. Your salvation is going to be completed. It is ready to be shown in the last day. God keeps you by his power. Amen. Not by your own. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all might be muscle bound. Some of y'all might work out things of that sort. But your power is only a limited source. You have to rely on God. Especially in a day and time like this. You really sure enough got to rely on Him. Yes. After hearing and seeing everything, it'll make you want to act crazy. It'll make you want to go come outside yourself and act ugly. But those of us who know God, some on the inside constrains you not to do those things. Some on the inside constrains you to keep loving. Someone is I constrains you to say, you know what, even though you said something harsh to me, it's cool. Even though I know you don't like me, I'm still going to hug you. Even though I know you talked about me and maybe put me on glass, I'm still going to show you the love of Christ. But then again, you got a lot of folks I ain't there yet. How can they do that? You know, but when my Lord and Savior died, when they took him on God bluff and they get all that horrible stuff to him. Isaiah said he was disfigured. Mm -hmm. Beer was pulled out of his chin. Uh -huh. Beats almost to the point where he almost died. Right. And not that he slap a Roman soldier. He didn't spit on nobody. He didn't beat nobody up. He didn't cuss nobody out. Amen. And then you just sit here with your poor self and say, whoa, it's me. Right. But a divine king come all the way down from his godly throne. Yeah. And put on flesh and come down and say, I'm going to be just like you. Yeah. Yes, he did. I'm going to show you that you can make it through this. Yes, he did. Because if I came from my divine state, how would you be able to have a transparency? All right. So I'm going to get in some skin. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to be despised. I'm going to be rejected. I'm going to go through. And I'm going to sacrifice myself. Yes, he did. So that you have a way that you can look at and model yourself after. That's it, that's it. But have we been listening? Are you cool with your excuses? You cool with how you feel? Because you still have a grown, grumpy mentality. And you won't let Christ in and do many things in your life. And then you wonder why things ain't moving here. Why ain't you blessed here? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Why trouble knocking at my door again? It just came last week. But if you ever trust in God and know that he cares for you, yes. he is going to make a way. Yes, he will. Every Amen. 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 So it's not by your power, but he'll keep you if you want to be kept. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Well, I'm going to park right here tonight. Especially with our young people. we got a lot of them that say, well, I like to do certain things that everybody else is doing. 
I was at my, my brother's house yesterday. My oldest brother and my nephew was uh, was talking. He said, uh, go to YouTube and uh, pull up this song called Millie Rock. <laughs> now, I've never heard it before. No. So I looked at him and said, huh? He pulled it up and then he started doing the little dance or whatever. I'm pretty sure y'all can do it. It looked like he was going to I don't know what's going on, but... Yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, he was, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, whatever, you know, all that stuff. It's like, and his mama said, you think you're really cool, don't you? Hey, yeah, yeah, cool. I don't know what he was saying, I don't know what the song was saying. But I didn't think of that song. And then I, I got introduced to uh, the, a panda. Yeah. A dangerous species, some rapper. <laughs> They call itself family with a gold oh, chain. Two chains. No, two gold chains. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, yeah, you can laugh because I, I have no clue what this stuff is. No, Many of us don't. I, a couple of shaking our heads. Mm, I know some of y'all do, but I, I'm trying to figure this stuff out that with these songs and with the popularity of doing. What everybody else is doing, is, is it really sound? No. 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 What, what, would I really sell out to be waving my arms like this? <laughs> so that I can be respected and be popular? It, it, it makes no sense to me, but the stupidity of the world has so much crept into our young people and so much into the church. Yes. And then nobody won't say nothing about it. Because if you say something about it, somebody get mad. Uh, you oh, that's that's right there. Right there. Somebody get angry. Yep. Somebody go tell pastor. Yeah, oh, yes, they're going to tell pastor. Right. Somebody go write an angry letter. <laughs> somebody go post it on Facebook. Yeah, they're going to You're going to get a hashtag and a tag and everything else. They might even screenshot your stuff. Yeah, they sure will. I don't understand. I'm going to tell you this. I ain't going to be the preacher. That's going to preach popular messages so that you can feel good. Right. Amen. I'm going to preach the word of God. That's it. That's right. So whether you like it or not, whether it cuts you, whether it hits you, or whatever it needs to do, I hope it makes you uncomfortable. I hope it makes you swerve. Hallelujah. Because I want the same thing to happen when I get into this word. It even comes and directs my life. Right. Uh -huh. right. Because the times we're living in, we need yes. some kind of direction. Yes. Yes. The direction of the world is so lost it makes no sense. I wouldn't dare follow nobody to call their name Panda. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You name yourself as a Chinese endangered species bear. <laughs> but a lot of our people think it's cool. I heard some of the lyrics, something in Atlanta and all the other stuff, it didn't make no sense. Oh. I know, I know you know it. I know, I know.
Them my boys right there. I don't care what you say, Mom. I don't care what you say, Dad. That's what y'all say. I hear you, Pastor. You cool, but you old. You understand. I I hear you, Joe, preaching, but yeah, you 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 ain't in school like me. You you understand. I I gotta be popular. I, I gotta go have the nice kicks. I, I I gotta go put on the nice clothes. I gotta go hang out on the corner. I, I I gotta do those certain things so that people can respect me and people can like me. And knowing that you're probably just the number one clown in that group. Because when it's all said and done, you really find out who your true friends are. Oh yes, you will. When you get in trouble, huh? When challenges come, you be looking. Where they go? It was And when that stuff happens, because you put your trust in people, oh my God, who were there only for just a little while, or you didn't even recognize that they were enemy towards what your purpose was. Wow. You allowed them to creep in. You allow them to hang out with you, and then when those things come, when they leave you high and dry, you're looking, now you've got trust issues. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. I don't know if I can really have friends now. I don't know if I can love. I, 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 I don't know if I can be in another relationship. I, I don't know. Because you make crazy, stupid decisions. Uh -huh. And for some of us adults, we've been there. Oh, what you say? Some of them still in crazy situations. <laughs> the thing is, for those who are young, for those who are kind of naive, for those who are kind of getting, you know, their way, won't get through the water, learn how to swim, you got the lifeguard telling you, you know, you need to do this, you need to have to do it this way. You, you don't have all the answers. When problems arise, God might send somebody to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if your ear is open. That's boy. Are you listening or you sitting there with your grumpy adult attitude saying, you can't tell me nothing. That's what they say. I don't feel like hearing it. Let me learn on my own. Oh, wow, Jesus. And then some of your mothers and fathers try to save you and get hit by the bus. Still but yet for some reason, everybody want to be the chicken that crossed the road. <laughs> Because you got a bunch of idiot chickens running across the road and you want to get behind them. Uh -huh. No, you got the wings of an eagle and you should be sawing over that, that bus that's coming that way. What you right. say? But you want to walk. Mm -hmm. Selling out your full potential what God has put on the inside of you. Yes, Jesus. Just so you can have a minute recollection of respect mm -hmm. that's going to fade away. Sure. Just so you can look good and be popular well. for just a season. It's funny. I know everybody's been in high school at least again. That's four years. And how many people tried to be the best and look the best for four years? Did everybody go off to college? Don't nobody remember you? No, no. no, no. You try to get your hair cut in certain ways. You came with a couple crazy clothes. You try to date this person and that person. You try to do all that kind of stuff, get in trouble, get class clown. And then after y'all graduate, y'all senior year, if you make it a senior year. Don't nobody remember you. Because everybody grown. Mm -hmm. Folks got jobs now. Mm -hmm. A lot of them got babies. Mm -hmm. A lot of them got mistresses and misters and stuff going on. And you sell out for a little bit of popularity. And then when you get in college, <laughs> and I've been there, it, it's, it's a little bit more real than high school. Oh, yes, it is. Because then you make long lasting relationships. You have classes with the people. You live with these people. Some of them you still talk to after you get out. Long distance friends across the country, across the world. Because now you're in an adult state. You can make great decisions now. But I've never understood how young people will settle up just to be seen. And what I wonder sometimes is go back to home. What are mom and dad doing? What are they instilling in us? You know, are they, tell, are they affirming you? Are you trying to find affirmation throughout other people? Are you trying to build yourself up so you can get affirmation from other folks? So you can get your back patted and you get congratulated and you can have your hands shaken. 
But Peter tells us that hope is still alive. It's all found in the word of God. You may try the world, but I'll tell you one thing about the world. that chew you up and spit you out. Because your salvation depends on the Lord, not yours. I, how many of y'all try to keep yourselves? How long that lasts? Last mm. For some of y'all, it even last a day. <laughs> not even two hours. Because you have not so learned Christ. You have not allowed him to get in and really reside on the inside of you. Yeah, you ain't missing out on nothing. No, I ain't. Just because everybody go to that party don't mean you got to go. Because it might be you, the very one, that might come up missing, might have a bullet on your name, a name on a bullet name, stuff, whatever. Yes. A bullet with your name on it, anything of that sort. I remember when I was down in Springfield, some of my guys went downtown to go party. They said, Joe, we'll be back. We're going to go downtown for a little bit. I said, all right. Now, I ain't going to fuss at you, but you're grown. You can make your own decisions. I just need you to be aware of consequences after Right. All right. They went. <laughs> One of the idiots decided that he was going to take a drink from a stranger. Oh, no. The drink happened to be for a girl that was sitting next to him that had been spiked with something. No. Now, the bad part is that he took that drink. So he, he took one for the team, so the girl, whatever he that man had transpired for that little girl, she didn't go home and didn't come and miss anything like she was okay. But when Kevin came back, he was messed up. He said, I ain't never going out here. He was scared. I told her, I said, you trying to be grown and do other stuff when you don't understand the full consequences of what you're doing. Right, right. And y'all, y'all pray for him. God's still trying to you know, get him the way he needs to be and stuff like that. But you need to understand the actions that you do have a consequence. Yes, yes, yes. Whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us every deed done in his body, whether good or bad, shall be judged. Yes, mm -hmm. As I, I hope your good outweigh your bad by the time we get up there to judge. Amen. 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 <clears throat> but your salvation depends on God. For it's going to be shown in these last days. People are going to try you. Stuff is going to happen. Folks are going to push your buttons. They're going to back you in corners. They're going to get in your face. They're going to do all sorts of things. And what the true test of Peter is saying, where is your faith and your salvation and where is your hope when that stuff happens? Are you still straddling on the excuses that I ain't there yet? You still straddling on excuses that the Lord is working with me? You still straddling on the excuse that I, 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 you know, I, I feel some type of way. I'm sensitive. When are you going to show that your faith and your calling is an election joy? Come on now. How will you let the world back you into a corner when you got something greater that outbeats the world? Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. And I believe in these times, we're seeing stuff transpire. As I said before, you see what happened in Dallas. If you ain't watched it yet, you see what happened in Minnesota. You see what happened in Baton Rouge. You see what happened in Oakland when they stopped the freeway. But it's also later on your own streets as well. What you say? In your own backyard when you start driving down the road. Mm -hmm. Hearing shots, there ain't fireworks. Mm -hmm. okay. Going to funerals. Yes. Telling friends goodbye. Mm -hmm. Seeing family members go away. Mm -hmm. And we still playing. We still acting up. We still, we still being a fool. But somebody looking at you. The world needs an example. And it's time, as Peter is telling us, to get ourselves together. Stand firm in our faith in these last days. Be strong and very strong in the Lord. Right. Show them that your God is able. Uh -huh. Show them that he can keep you. Yes, 
Yes, it can. Show them when they come on this side, it's better than what they had before. Uh -huh. Show them that he can make a way out of nowhere. Yes, he can. Talk about his goodness. Mm -hmm. Tell them about his love. But some of y'all got tape on y'all mouths. Mm -hmm. Don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Don't share with nobody. I'm scared how they're going to see me. I don't want them to hear all about that. How are you going? You got to spread the good news. You don't have to spread the good news standing up here. God has called all of us to preach. Whether you got a collar or a robe or not, you've been called to preach. As to preach the goodness of the Lord and tell them about Jesus Christ. That's all that matters. No hermeneutics, no homilies, anything of that sort. But God is calling for us to stand in these last days. Am I boring your patience? No. no. That's good. So we need. These last days were a trying time of faith. And I wonder if we're still keeping hope alive. I know black lives matter. I know all lives matter. But to the people of God that are black, to the people of God that are white, blue, brown, green, purple, polka dot of a rainbow, is your hope still alive in the one who created everybody? Yes. Is your hope still alive even when things look crazy? Is your hope still alive when you go to a hell-bound home? Is your hope still alive when your children are acting fool? Is your hope still alive when you don't get to the school that you want to get into? Is your hope still alive when you don't get that job? Is your hope still alive when that boyfriend or girlfriend leaves you? Is your hope still alive in any situation that you come against? Are you just painting the picture to make everybody seem like you look good? That's a serious thing. But these last days, regardless of what TV and news, regardless of what cops do, if it would ever befall you, if you ever became a victim, would you be solid enough in your faith trusting God? If a gun would ever took into you or to somebody close to you, could you honestly say within yourself, I know many people don't want to come to this kind of conclusion, but this is reality here. Because God has no respect to persons. An enemy don't fight fair. No, no. They don't care who you is, how much money you got, who your mom and daddy is, don't matter. I heard Rock Parsons say, some people like to play with the devil and say, well, leave me alone. And he won't bother me. Then the main people he really gets. You have to understand he's real. There are real problems going on. Reality is knocking at the door. And what the main thing is is that your hope got to be grounded in Christ. Yes. That's the only thing that's going to keep you and get you through what you're going through. Yes. Amen? Amen. But if that thing would ever come to you, would you ever be able to meet your Savior with a smile? I want you to think about it. Because it's getting real. It's getting real. It's getting super real. More stuff is going to happen. I don't know when we'll ever get peace. But more things, calamity is going to come. And if calamity ever knocked on your door and pulled your card, will you be ready? Or you're going to sit there and say, Lord, wait, give me time. I ain't get to do what I want to do yet. I sat in church. I played the organ. I opened the church door. I sat in the back and I heard the preacher. But by then, too late. Could you ever say that you're ready? Could you ever know that your relationship is solid? Amen? Amen. And though cops, people of different colors, government, or anything that sort of might take your rights, beat you, throw you down, or do all sorts of things, tell me what would you do? I know that my Savior ha has my back. And whatever happens, I have hope in Him that is still alive because of my faith. While the world runs in chaos, we have to be sure that our lives are solid in Christ. Verse 6 says, Though trouble has not at your door, many times you have joy because of the hope that is still alive. Amen. 
So when it comes knocking, know that your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Yes. That you're not trusted as sweet as friend, but wholly leaning on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock you stand. Every other thing you stand on is going to sink. Yes. It ain't firm enough. Amen. And how would you put yourself in a false reality to believe that whatever you stand on that's not of Jesus is going to hold you up? And then when you begin to sink and fall, here come all the raw emotions out of you. Why? How could they? What did I do wrong? Lord, you're wrong. How are you going to let that happen? But the direction, if you would ever understand what the preachers are telling you, if you would ever understand what mom and daddy are trying to ingrain into you, if you would ever understand what the Bible is saying, you would know. You would have that wisdom and knowledge and the direction on what you need to do, how you need to go about it. Amen? Amen. Verse 7 says, Your troubles have come in order to prove that your faith is real. It's worth more than gold. Gold can pass away even though fire has made it pure. Your faith is meant to bring praise, honor, and glory to God. That will happen when Jesus Christ returns. Trouble don't last always. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to get that. Right? If I look at somebody and say, trouble, trouble. Don't, last don't last always. Oh, that ought to give you some hope right there. Trouble don't last always. If you're in trouble right now, just know it's going to be over after a while. Yes, sir. If you're sitting in the midst of a storm, just know it's going to be over after a while. You might have to sit there and rock along and sing a song and hum, but you're going to come out of it. Amen? Amen. If you just lean on Jesus and say, oh, Lord, I know it looks bad. I know it looks crazy, but I know on the other side. When I get on through, oh, my God, it's going to be so much better. But many of us will be in the middle of the storm, the middle of trouble, circumstance. Though I need to get over here because it's so bad, I'll run all the way back to where I started from. Now, do that make sense? Then I gotta go back through. Again. Again. And then decipher myself. Am I gonna go over here? Uh, well, it's comfortable over here, so I'm gonna go back. Did that make sense? No. Not one bit. But you sit over here and complain. You sit over here and wallow and cry and do everything else. When all you need to do is get some faith about I yourself. Get to the middle of it. Stand through with patience in the doors and run and run the course and get on to the other side. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. Just a little bit of faith. Oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't think I'm fussing at y'all. No, come on. But this is the word. Mm -hmm. We got to put our bootstraps on and get ourselves ready together. Some of y'all been here too long. Too long to be defeated, too long to be acting crazy. It's time to get ourselves together in Christ. Amen? Amen. Verse 8. And I'm almost closing. Even though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him. You are filled with a glorious joy that can't be put into words. Mm -hmm. So faith relies on your trust. Hebrews chapter 11 and 1 says, Now faith is something things hope for, the evidence of things not seen. Though I have not seen God, I believe what he can do. Uh -huh. Now somebody out there would tell you, you're crazy. You have never seen the person you worship, but you believe that he can do yes. something. Yes, yes. You've gone to the doctor that had many bad reports, and he's looking at you crazy and saying, you're going to what, pray? I just told you you got cancer. But God. What's wrong with you? Science has proved that you have what I just said. I just gave you a diagnosis. I just showed you an x-ray. And you're going to go to a church and pray to an invisible being and say, fix it. Yes. They would call you that case. But there's something on the inside of the hope that we have that's still alive and say, you know what? Even though the doctor might not know what I know, 
Well, I know somebody who I've not seen yet yeah. that can fix all of my problems. That's it. That can take all my worries away. Yes. And you know why? Because I can rely on the testimonies of others. Yes. I can rely on what he did here in the word of God. Yes. I can rely on what he told me. I can rely on my own situation because I've seen him work and I well, know what he can do. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. Am I right about it? That's right. <laughs> and it's funny. Even though no man has seen God and lived, you yet love him because he loved you first. Mm. Oh my gosh. And though I might not see him in my situation right now, I still trust and believe that he's going to make a way. Yes, that's he will. Because that's where my hope is. Yes. That's where my faith is. Because I know I've seen him work. I've seen him do it over and over and over again. Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Yes, he does. Thank you, Jesus. I believe in him, he'll take care of me. For he has given you joy that is glorious, that cannot be put into words. Because of what he did on the cross called Calvary, he gave you something on the inside that you can pull down in your reservoir when you're going through situations and when you're suffering and when you've been going through for a while that you can get in touch with God and say, you know what, I'm down right now, but I know the joy of the Lord it is my strength. Yes, it is. Though I might not be able to see my way through, I know somebody who can give me strength. Yes. I know somebody who can give me comfort. Yes. I know somebody who can make my way even though my situation is big. He's bigger than that. Oh, glory to God. Yes. Am I in the Presbyterian church tonight? No. <laughs> I feel like I am. <laughs> I look something, something. Amen, Bodie. Oh. But... The joy that he gives is so glorious. It cannot be put into words. Oh my God, if you're going to understand what Peter was trying to tell us, <laughs> that what you have or what Christ has done cannot even be explained in, in words. You know, and the old cliche that says, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. And I truly believe that those have been said many, many, many years is a true statement. Because they didn't give it to me. God gave it to me. That's right. The Bible just said he gave you glorious joy. That cannot be put in the word. He filled you with it. Now all you got to do is get access to it and pull it out. So then there's no reason for you to be sitting down there. Oh, oh, it's me. You got joy on the inside. And my God, if somebody pulled that joy out today. And got with somebody else and said, you pull your joy out too, man. And you get your joy. And you get your joy. And you get your you, Before you know, you got everybody got a joyous jubilee going on in here. Because of what Christ has done. Yes. Not because of how you feel. Right. Not because of what you want to go on. Not because you in your feelings. But it's about Christ. Verse 9. You are receiving the salvation of your souls. It's the result of your faith. Amen? Amen. I'm closing here, but 1 Peter 5, chapter 8 through 11 tells us this. Control yourselves. Be on your guard. Your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion. He prowls and is looking around for someone to chew up and swallow. Oh, God. Stand up to him. Stand firm in what you believe. All over the world, you know that your brothers and sisters are going through the same kind of suffering. I want to tell you tonight, you're not in this thing by yourself. Amen. I want to tell you tonight that somebody knows what you're going through. I want to tell you tonight that it's just not a fixed fight. I want to let you know that your Savior is in the ring with you. He sees what's going on. He knows your issues. He knows your problems. And he's going to fight your battles for you. Mm -hmm. Can I preach a little while? Mm -hmm. Oh, can I? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> because God always gives you all the grace you need. Oh, I like that right there. Whatever you need, God's got it. Yes, he does. I wish somebody could understand that whatever time it is or how you feel, you can always knock on the master's door and he'll give you just what you need. Yes, he will. Am I right about it? Yep. Amen.
Because he gives you, because he has an unlimited supply. So you only have to suffer for a little while. Then God himself will build you up again. He will make you strong and ready. And he has chosen you to share in his eternal glory. Because you belong to Christ. And I wonder, do I have anybody here that says, I belong to Jesus. I make sure that my calling is an election show. I make sure that I'm getting myself prepared for what's coming. I'm making sure that when my name is called, that I'm ready to see my Jesus. Though trouble may rise and storms may come, I'm going to stand firm and hold my head up high. I know he cares for me. Yes, he does. Well, I'm on the mountaintop. Yes. Well, I'm on the stormy sea. Yes. Come with me. Yes. I know my God is able yes. to do exceedingly in the money. Yes. Well, all I can ask is yes. And then Peter says, give him power. Yes. And forever and ever, amen. Uh -huh. I'm wondering tonight, uh -huh. do I have any hold of those individuals? Uh -huh. Say, you know what, Pastor? Uh -huh. I heard what you were saying tonight. Uh -huh. And though it might have hurt me a little bit, though it might have came in my door, my door, I'm understanding in this last and evil day that I gotta get myself together. Time is winding up. That I got to get true and real about God. I gotta understand. I can't keep playing hopscotch. I can't keep back on the food and hanging around those that don't wanna go where God is trying to take me. I have to understand that I.
serve notice to whoever watches this. You need to understand it's time to come in the heart of Satan, God. It's time to get to know who Christ is. It's time to give him your life. You've been running around too long. You've been playing around too long. You've been careless with your life too long. Your life don't belong to you. But he died on Calvary's cross. His blood was shed for me and you. Show the right way even when we're frustrated, even when we don't want to do. You still got to do it. 